Ripping down thin pieces on a table saw can be a bit of a challenge at times. The closer the fence gets to the blade, the thinner the push stick needs to be up to the point where it's no longer really doing its job, not allowing you to hold the piece down. Now I realise you can buy some rather impressive looking and rather expensive push sticks to enable you to do just that, that will span the blade. Or using scraps and materials that are available in most people's workshops, you could make yourself a thin rib jig. A thin rib jig is a pretty simple device. And if you think about it, it hardly warrants being called a jig, as it's nothing more than an adjustable stop that allows you to butt the timber up against it and then make the cut. Instead of setting the table saw fence so that you can cut off a three mil piece, with the three mil piece being located between the blade and the fence, instead, the piece you're cutting would be on the far side. So utilizing the stop, You'd set that stop so it's three mil from the left hand side of the blade, but you'd do it back here and then you'd bring your fence and workpiece up to touch the stop, lock your fence in place and then you'd make your cut with the stop being safely back here and the piece being able to glide past the stop. And this is what I've come up with, the thin rip and repeat cut jig. Everything I've used on this build I've found in the workshop. Some leftover MDF, some old jig building bolts, bit of T-track, bit of scale. I'm utilizing the mitre slot in the sliding table saw or the top of the cabinet saw to lock the jig in place. And then a bit of T-track at the top so I can set the stop bar to whatever I want. Take my piece of wood, set it up to the stop bar, lock the fence in place and make the cut. And another, and another, and another. Absolutely fantastic, flawless, dead simple to make. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by slicing down this old piece of MDF I've got. I need to cut in between these holes, but that piece in between the two should be wide enough. So I'll cut this piece off. Then I'll cut myself a 200 mil wide piece and then I want another piece at 50 mil wide for the stop bar. Now I'll square the ends up on the two pieces that I've cut. With my baseball cut to width and the end square, I can now think about fixing it to the table saw. The approach I've taken is to 3D print an insert that will slide into this, albeit mitre slot. Now mine's a very pronounced T slot. On the majority of saws that I've looked at, the mitre slot is to all intents and purposes a T slot, but with a very flat part of the T. So I'll make the file that I've saved from this drawing available um, for download on my website and you can download the STL file and then squish this bit down in one of a better word reduce it to the appropriate size for your mitre slot. So this T-bar insert is going to slide into the slot and then I'm going to hold it in place with a couple of 8mm head bolts 6mm holes that will pop up through there and then I'll use some thumb screws to just lock the board into place. I'm going to drill those holes at 25 mil back from the lead and edge. So I've got a goodly portion there that will negate the ability for the bolt to break out. And I'm also going to sight this dead center. The bar that I've drawn is 150 mil long and the bolt holes are 25 mil in. So I've replicated that onto the board and there are the two places I need to drill my holes to. So now I can thread my bolts through, slide my T-bar insert in and drop my baseboard on top. 
and with some leftover hardware that we've all got hanging around somewhere. That's my baseboard locked in place. So my next job is to cut the recess for the front of the stop bar. And I want that to be able to sink back in so it's flush with the front. Again, so that I maximise this amount of space. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to route a slot in for this piece of T-track. Now I've still got my centre mark there from before. The recess I'm going to cut is 50mm wide, so I've marked 25mm either side of the centre line. And my T-track is 19mm, sorry, 18mm wide, so I've marked 9mm either side of the centre line. So that represents the area that I want to cut out for the front of the stop bar. And this is the area that I want to take out for the T-track. So I'm just making sure I've got that bang on between the marks. And then I'm going to take a couple of passes so I don't overload the bit. Just before I glue my T-track in place, I'm going to round off these corners, make it look a bit better. So I'll cut the majority of that off on the bandsaw, just so I don't overload the bit on the router table. And finally, a little round over just to break those sharp edges. And now a couple of coats of polyvine heavy duty floor varnish. I know it says floor varnish on it, but it's absolutely brilliant. Dries really quick. Rock hard finish. Onto the stop board. I've struck a centre line all the way down the stop board so I can cut a mitre off at each end. This end, I'm going to then cut that little triangle piece off and glue on the bottom of the front so that I've got a nice bit of support to be able to glue my replacement bearing on. So just before I cut this little triangle off, I'm going to cut the stop board to length same length as the baseboard that's going to give me approximately this amount left which i can more easily get a clamp on so that i can glue that onto the end of that with a bit of epoxy first clamp it while the epoxy goes off then i can cut that off and then i can glue that to the underneath of that i think that made sense got some 30 minute modeler's epoxy that I'm going to use for this. So a reasonable amount of gloop. Drop that on there. Try not to get my fingers covered. 
beastly sticky stuff. This is just a scale that I liberated from another spare piece of tea track at the back of the workshop. And I only need a portion of about 100 mil. The distance between the end of my baseboard and my blade is going to be around the 80 mil mark. So I'm thinking if I rate this little recess at about 100 mil long, then I've got plenty of room to allow me to place this scale in exactly the right position when I come to calibrate the board. So I've marked the width of the scale and I've marked 100 mil in. So I've got my bit height set to half of a quarter of nothing, which is what I think that scale is. Line it up with my pencil mark. Set my fence and then push that through until the bit is approximately in the middle of my line. Now the T-Track I'm using is a little off-cut that's left over because I'm a poor way from stray from Cornwall and I can't afford to buy a new piece. So I'm going to line that up at the back end just in line with the top of that roundover. And I'm going to take my stop board, rest it up against the blade and I'm going to set a mark there that's just inside the T-Track so that when the stop board is at its furthermost position that bolt's not going to fall out the end and for this back piece, I'm also going to set that back in a bit as well for the same reason. So that when I want to put this away and hang it up on the wall, that bit isn't going to fall out the end of there either. So I can now transfer those two marks to the top, drill my two holes. I can put a little round over around the top just to make it look a little nicer and a little nicer to hold when I'm moving it. I'm not going to do the bottom. I need to keep that clean and sharp. So it registers nicely against my scale that I'll stick in. And then I'll be able to epoxy that in place and epoxy my front with my angled bar on it. And we're pretty much there. pretty good. Now to put it all together. So to calibrate it or to set the scale in place, I'm going to move the stop bar up so the angle bracket makes contact with one of the teeth. Lock it in place. Then I'm going to take my liberated scale and slide it up so that the zero mark is right on the back of the stop bar. And I'm going to utilize a piece of sellotape for the minute just so that I can make a test cut and prove it's right. So if the scale's in the right place and I move that back to three mil, I should now be able to make a three mil cut. Two point eight five. I think that's a goer. More than happy. So with the cellar tape still holding that in place, I'm going to put a little dab of cyano at the back.
And there you have it, proof of the pudding in the eating. Five, four, three, two, and even a one mil piece. No cost, all from scraps, off cuts, or bits left over from other projects. Really happy with that. I think that's going to prove its worth time and time again. I'll put all the details and measurements and everything you need to know to make this jig yourself down in the description. Hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope you make one for yourself. Ta-ra!